coming to you now, a good friend of mine, Judge Monta Evans, he sits in the very big seat of the She's been translating for about five, six, seven years now. And uh, she's going to give you information on the state set aside, also known as state stuff. Okay, now, thank you, Judge Thomas. That's Four. 
form of the current law and the pending law, which Judge Thomas said there is a pending bill that will potentially expand the expungement requirements, which will include, what is it? Oh, which will allow you to apply again three years after you applied and were denied. And she'll talk about that in a minute. She forgot that. She asked me what she did. I'll go over that real quick. She was okay. So, once you determine that you are eligible to apply for a set-aside, and on the application that we're going to give you at the end, there's a checkout sheet. You'll go through that to determine. Then you'll need to get your fingerprint card. Two copies of your fingerprint card. Go to the state police in Michigan or in Detroit. On certain days, you can go to the state police office and get your fingerprint cards for free. They usually run about $10 for those fingerprint cards. And on the fingerprint card, they'll tell you, they'll ask, who do we send the, um, send them to, the response to? That's when you send the fingerprint card to the state police. Who do we send the letter back to? Put your address on it. Don't put your lawyer's address on it. Put your address on it. You need a certified copy of your conviction that you're trying to expunge. So go to the, go to the um, clerk's office in the city or the county where you were sentenced. So if you're trying to set aside a misdemeanor, you'll be in a district court. If you're trying to set aside a felony, you'll be in a circuit court in whatever county the offense occurred in that you were sentenced in. You'll go to the clerk's office and first ask for a register of action. It's like a history. It tells everything under your name that has occurred. And when you're going to see an attorney, you'll need that so that attorney can look at your register of action and determine what you were actually convicted of. So if you had a HIDA, Judge Thomas mentioned HIDA, or a diversion program, 7411, they'll be able to determine that you don't need to apply for an expungement if you had any of those type diversion or deferral programs. They're not on your record. You need to determine what you want to set aside. And then you'll go to the clerk's office and get a certified record of that conviction. So if you have one felony of any, and you have, for example, any is the felony that you want to set aside. You don't have any other offenses, maybe a, um, a minor misdemeanor, that's not going to stop you from applying, you'll get a certified record of that conviction. That's going to cost maybe $10. You're going to fill out the application completely. They're going to ask for the date of the conviction, what the charge was, your address, your date of birth, social security number, and then you're going to need to have it notarized. And then you'll send a copy of the application your um, copy of the certified conviction, you'll send that to the prosecutor in the county in which you were convicted of the city. Your local prosecutor gets a copy of that application, the fingerprint card, copy of the fingerprint card. The state police will actually get the fingerprint cards. But everyone else gets a copy of it. You'll send a copy of the application and the fingerprint card to the Attorney General's office as well. The Attorney General has to do their own check, and they usually issue a, they usually will issue a letter saying it's okay for you to apply. It depends on the court that you're going to to get a, um, a hearing date. Some courts require to have that letter from the Attorney General that says you can be seen in some courts just will set you a court date and let the judge determine whether or not you can, you know, you can uh, have it set aside. They don't rely solely on the letter from the Attorney General's office. And then you'll also get something back from the state police. You'll take the letter from the Attorney General's office, the letter from the state police that shows that you have no prior conviction. You'll take that, if you're cleared, with your application to the clerk in the city.
city or the county where your conviction was because they're going to give you their court dates. There's no application fee for at the clerk's office. Then you get a court date. You'll go back to the judge who sentenced you. And then the judge who sentenced you is no longer there because they retired or they passed. The judge that, have, that has taken over their docket will be the person that you go in front of. You'll take all that information. And when I was practicing, I would tell my clients to get letters three, from your pastor, from people who know you, who knew you before the, um, the conviction or the sentence and after. So they can talk about how you have improved, what you've done. Their sentence focuses on what you've done for the community that's very important. All those things are taken into consideration because, because remember, it is a privilege and it's not a right. So the judge wants to know that you are remorseful, that you have been rehabilitated, and that you're going to be a productive citizen in our society, and that you deserve a second chance. Now, if you get in front of the judge, and you think that, uh, or the judge tells you, well, your application is not complete, or you think that the judge is getting ready to deny you for whatever reason, and I'm going to give you an example that Judge Thomas always says. The judge is just having a bad day, and they're not giving out set aside for anybody. Before that judge says tonight, you say, Your Honor, I withdraw my application. Say it quickly before a ruling is made. Because if you are denied, you can never apply again under the current law. Now, the pending legislation will allow you to apply again three years after you were denied. So be sure to be, make sure your application is complete, is thorough, you have missed an I or, or T problem. Something very simple can have your application denied. Now, in Michigan, what I just described to you is the law in Michigan. You may have some type of a conviction or charge in another state. When the state police runs their check, all of those other convictions from another state all over the world is going to show up. When I was practicing, I had people tell me, no, I don't have anything else on my record. And I would ask many times, why do I want to waste your money or my time? How many do you have? Is this all that you have that's in front of you? They say, that's all I have. When the state police runs the check, here comes something from New York 30 years ago. But it's still there. And then they say that, no, it's still not me. The last expungement that was done, and that I was the lawyer, the gentleman was sure that it was not him. He was positive that it was not him. He thought maybe it was his father. So we had a motion in front of the judge, we had the police come, we had the fingerprints taken, and lo and behold, the fingerprints matched. He forgot. Now he's, he has a denial, he cannot apply ever again. You want to make sure that you complete the application completely, completely. And when you go before the judge, make sure you have your order prepared. Some counties will issue an order. Some counties rely on you to have your own order prepared because when you get, you hear that judge say, application granted, you want to get an order, stamp signed right then. The courts speaks through their order. You don't want to give anybody a second chance to think about it. You don't want to get anybody, give anybody a chance to lose your record. You don't want human error to step in and put some information in the um, computer that's incorrect. Take your order with you. And the application, it does have, does it have a quarter on the application packet that I can have? Okay. So at the back of the application packet that you'll get at the end of this, you'll have a copy of the order as well. And you're going to make several copies of the entire packet because it goes to different departments. You need to make at least six, seven copies of the entire packet. And always, always keep a copy for yourself. I'm amazed at how many people have come before me and say, I filed something I didn't make a copy. Well, I court lost it. We just can't find it. I'm trying to find it for you. Keep a copy. Okay? Be 
encouraged. Make sure you fill out your application. And Judge Thomas is going to come back and tell you about the Trump card. Yeah. <laughs>